So our first piece of advice would be to claim your baggage. My baggage, unfortunately, is in this relationship, um, but I do need to claim mine and then I need to work on it. I can't just put it off on him. No one can make you do something. Understanding that you're responsible for your feelings, you're responsible for the things that you say and that you do, and accepting that about one another and not blaming each other all the time. Knowing your triggers is another great tool for bettering yourself and your relationship. When you identify them, you can put a name to them and then it can help you talk to your partner about it. You can be like, hey, when you brought this up, like this is why it made me feel this way. And so your partner can then acknowledge that and hopefully, you know, maybe adjust how they say something differently. And whatever else comes up when triggers, you know, happen to you, be able to, to stay ahead of it instead of taking it out on your partner and, and being frustrated and being passive aggressive. It's just like, you know, we try to come to each other and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. I don't know why, but just so you know, like if I'm short or frustrated, it's not because of you. We always say over communicate. All you have to do to, to communicate is just start talking. All about just coming from a good place, start talking and then listening. Check in is like a temperature gauge for your relationship. So when you do that, you see what your partner's feeling, you give each other affirmations, you ask for what you need, you own whatever is going on. So if someone is frustrated the following day, oh, they checked in about, they're kind of you know frustrated about something at work that had nothing to do with you. This way you're not taking it on yourself when they're acting a certain way the next day. So the next tip would be listen up. Um, listening is something that I have get better at. Um, sometimes it's hard to listen because you wanna interject and you wanna say, a solution. Sometimes it's just really nice to just listen to your partner, listen to your friend, because they might just literally need you to listen. We talk about, you know, active listening and like this, just like this. Jan is doing a great job right now being on her phone while I talk. I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. Like that's not listening. <laughs> yeah. Your body language while listening really shows how much you respect and willing to respect and hear and listen to your partner telling the truth. Those of you who know our story can understand this is a core of this book for us and should be in any relationship. You know, this is the first relationship that I've ever tried to have and be honest in. Now, obviously early on I wasn't, so it's still new to me. The smallest things can allow your partner to, to question trust. Trusting the truth has always been a fear of mine, and that goes back to my childhood wounds. You know, talking to your partner, expressing them, if you have a fear around telling the truth, why? Because then your partner could be more empathetic around why you might hesitate and not to take it personally and understand that you don't wanna, you're not trying to be deceptive on purpose and, and hurt them, but there might be under, you know, layers under that. Walking away is another great tip and something that I've had a really tough time with because I never wanted to walk away. I wanted to solve a problem right away. But what I've learned in our relationship is that sometimes when I walk away, when he walks away, it's actually better for us and how we resolve fights faster now. He needs more time to process um, and he might come back and go, hey, I realized, but if I keep pounding the issue, he's not gonna get there any faster if I, if I do that. Because in about five minutes, whatever we were fighting about probably isn't gonna be that big anymore. For us personally, we think it's a really good tool to be able to name when you're gonna come back so you can finish the conversation. We don't think leaving the fight there and walking away from it completely is good. You should resolve it. Prayer for us has been something that, you know, we both admittedly in the book talk about how we got very far away from. The fact that spirituality lost its place in our lives was, was sad. And so through all of this, we definitely found our higher power again. But the thing is, there's different ways to, to, to pray or to have a higher power. Just, it's more about quieting yourself. It's not just about making time, but it's also making intentional time. You make the time to go to work, you put intention on that, you put intention on your kids, um, but are you putting intention on your marriage? A lot of people get trapped in that leftover time like once the day is done, they're home from work, kids are in bed, that's the leftover time before you go to bed. But no, it is different. It is different than saying, hey, let's go on the back porch, let's have a glass of wine, let's just talk. And so it's just those little moments can really connect the two of you. Also really important to clean up your side of the street. 
but also to clean up the, your partner's side of the street that you might have placed on them. Apologizing, you know, is huge for your partner and also good for you. I have a hard time with apologizing. I think all women might, but um, <laughs> just because we try so hard to be perfect. <laughs> You're hardly ever wrong. <laughs> Don't treat each other like the enemy. Remember that you guys are a team. I say that just to remind myself because I, I slip into that on a regular basis. So you guys are a team and, and just take life on like that way. He is the, the biggest and best tool and tip that we could ever give. And you know, I've been to a dozen and it, you know, it takes time to find the right therapist. And I, all I can say is don't get discouraged because you know, I, I was discouraged in the very beginning, but when you find the right one, man, it's magical. We suggest therapy for anybody, whether they're single, married, so, I mean, it doesn't matter what walk of life or what you're in. It's just, you might not even deal, be dealing with anything, but just go and talk to somebody. I kind of look at this year and be like, okay, like this is like the start of like, you know, our new marriage and hoping that we continue to grow based off the things that we know and that we've learned.